Hello and welcome back to coverage of the PDGA Euro Tour. This is the final round back nine of the Kona Peach Day Open. We are bringing you coverage of the FPO lead card brought to you by MDG Media. Fireworks are going off here at the Franz Ferdinand Disc Golf Course. You see your sole leader, Rachel Turton, getting herself a significant lead in round two and holding on to it here today. The battle for second and third also very tight right now with Kaidi and Anneli both tied at four under and Sophie right behind them. This lead card is heating up and in only nine holes, we will find out who's here to play. We get started here with hole 10, a 92 meter par three with a double mando. Although the gap is quite forgiving in its width, it has a significantly low ceiling with these hanging branches. You want something that fights through the gap and then softly goes to the right. You can opt for the turnover backhand or the forehand hyzer for the right-handed player. You can pick the shot you're most comfortable with and try to settle it softly on this faster downhill green. Anneli on the tee, shown to be very comfortable with the forehand. She pushes that Anheuser release out of the hand, getting the soft flex back through the Mando cleanly and a little bit of a roll. She is right up there in the circle. Nice control. You can see just how smooth her forehand form is. Rachel here playing a similar line, but with less of an Anheuser release. She fades out a touch earlier. She'll have a slightly longer putt than Anneli, but... A similar line to the basket, almost identical even. Kaidi there shaping the backhand. She's shown to have a good forehand, but also really solid with a lot of angles. She comes up just a little bit low. It's most common to hit the branches there with the backhand as it is more difficult to control the angle. So we see a similar line from Sophie just battling underneath those. They're left with long putts here. Sophie, some amazing putts in the front nine and an amazing putt in the back nine as well now. She just cannot be stopped on these greens. Circle one, circle two. Incredible putts from Sophie. Kaidi with the stepper as well. Strong side in the middle. Really nice. And that was clearly going in the entire way. A nice step putt for her. Rachel now to keep pace. Oh, so close, just off the cage. Finds the chains, but not enough. And Anneli as well. A rare timid putt from her. Normally blasting the chains pretty hard from circle one and circle two. We'll see two birdies and two pars here on hole 10. Annelie making sure to put that one in. I like that she goes through her routine, even on those shorter putts. Important to secure all the strokes here as we final, finally get down to these last holes. Hole 11, a 261 meter par five. You have a left to right sloping fairway as well as some very large and dense trees to the right and the left. You wanna to try to hit your drive right before this gap or if you are throwing really far through the gap where it then opens out into this wide open fairway, you wanna push the distance down the hill and then try to wrap around this final enormous guardian tree you see on the right. With extremely low hanging branches and a dense branch structure, you can either crash through it, try to go under it, or swing around as the drone flies with the forehand approach as you make it into this green. There's also some rough that is really thick, just long of the basket coming down the hill. So a hole that really makes you choose, pick some options here on both the shot and entrance to the green. Kaidi pushing this one out pretty far, but hyzering out a bit early. She'll be left with a short run up potentially requiring a standstill from there with the tree in her way 
Might even go to the forehand just to get away from the tree a little bit. We see Sophie there with a beautiful flex. She crushes that one right down the middle. Perfect landing zone. She will be easily getting around that corner on her next shot. Anneli also, similar to Kaidi's line, quite high with a stable looking disc. She fades out, but below the branches, that's a nice spot that will open up the gap to the right for her. She'll be throwing straight to Heiser on the next shot, I believe. We see your leader, Rachel here, pushing the distance, really showing off how far down the fairway she can get. She flips the cameraman, getting a full flex. That is near that 150 banner behind the tree. She's really pushing that one. A great drive from Rachel. Anneli now pushing this one. Way down the hill, getting a solid turnover, relying on that DD1 super fast. You see it fight through everything there, and she is just shy of the big tree, likely going to try to battle under it. Kaidi from an awkward spot, both standstill and with a pinched gap into the fairway, gets the power hyzer out there to the open, potentially looking to play the forehand approach from the left side of the fairway into the green. Sophie with a great drive in the middle. Playing her signature turnover line, she pushes that distance as far as possible. And we see Rachel here from prime time. She's going to blast this one straight at the branches on the right side and hope it filters through. Looks to have gotten caught up just beforehand. I think with a short upshot underneath, she'll be left with a good birdie look. Kaidi pushing this one forwards and wide enough. And actually getting a cut skip off the angle there. We'll find herself a little bit long, but really entered the green pretty solidly. Hopefully she'll be left with a putt. We see Sophie battle her way under that low ceiling as well. I think a straddle available for her. You see how tiny this gap is now. Anneli playing the over stability to ensure some ground play off the mulch. Really nicely done. A disc that's a little bit slower might not have the same finish, so... Good choice there. The disc up with the low ceiling. You see just how rough this is for Kaidi. She went just a few meters long and is left with almost nothing. Pitching out to the basket. Sophie from the knee. Another solid putt for her. Anneli as well, really confident putting. Both of them securing the birdie here. Playing as one of the shorter par fives, I think they're all definitely attacking this hole. This is Rachel for birdie now. Easy work for her. Solid putting, playing her own game, executing the game plan, maintaining the lead and still continuing to birdie holes. It's great to see. As Kaidi will tap in her par there. And what looks like a good approach caught an unfortunate skip into the rough. Our players will move on to hole 12. An 84 meter par 3 over the OB water the entire way. You want to fire something straight into the hillside on the other side. Slide up and be as close as possible for your putt. Any branches that you meet on the way to this island green will almost surely dump your disc in the water, which is most often times a lost disc. It's very murky and very dark. Tough to find something that falls in even if you see it in there. So maybe lingering in the heads of these players. Some final round nerves potentially. We'll see them tested. Sophie finding that right side rough. There is actually some safe land on the right that you can see, although it's very unorthodox fairway to play in. She may have snuck over. We'll see if she's playing from the OB line. Anneli looking to cross. Really fortunate as well to stay safe. Finding a lot on the way. I think she must have just snuck over. Rachel here to make a statement. Beautiful. Fires one into the hillside. Right side fading softly at the end. She settles pin high. What a great time to find that for Rachel, really putting her foot down on this lead card. 
tidy, finds some branches, and also somehow finds safety. Wow, yeah, we see Sophie did go OB. She hit that right side branch, dropping her. She now makes it to the island green, catching a soft skip to position herself within good footing for her putt. We'll see Kaidi up first, though. Soft a bid up the hill. She'll have a tap in three. Anneli for her birdie. Just snuck over that line, as you can see. Gives it the jump putt uphill, but still about 10 to 12. That requires a lot of commitment with the tree in her way. Sophie again. An incredible putt and an incredible bogey save for her with that OB penalty stroke. Really tough to come back, but she manages to find that. And Rachel as well, securing her putt in the chains. That is a birdie for her to go 10 down total. Kaidi and Anneli both taking their pars here on hole 12. One birdie, one bogey. Even result total for the card. They then walk to hole 13, a 108 meter par three with a left to right sloping fairway and a few low hanging branches to get in your way. A lot of players will shape a turnover backhand through the gap here, potentially a forehand if you have the power being downhill late in the fairway. It plays a little bit less than 108, but still requiring a good amount of power and touch. Elevated basket as well. If a hole is a bit easy here, they like to add that extra element as it will continue to test our players' putters late in the round. Rachel playing something really understable, going Heiser release on the left side, quite a long turn, and then catches a soft fade at the end away from the basket. She'll be putting downhill, possibly just a layup given her lead. I think she'd be all right with a three from there. Anneli getting this one turned over as well, but a touch too quickly, although she battles through those branches. Some nice speed and power to that disc, not getting caught up. Kaidi also with a beautiful turnover backhand, and she actually just fades out at the last second as she is tracking towards chains a lethal line from Kaidi Al Salu we see a similar line from Sophie she's shown a great command of the backhand turnover she grounds it just a little bit short also might be a layup from there yeah all things considered at this point in the round she opts to take it safe take her three I think Rachel as well yep Absolutely fine decision. Knowing she has the lead, she will walk away with par from there, without a doubt. But Anneli gives it a bid, comes out a little bit early. And you'll see now the difficulty of giving it a bid from the elevated basket. If you're not too close and miss it, you can be left with another tough putt. Kaidi there, just cashing out the left side. Tough test for Anneli now. Anneli making that putt there. She will be taking a bogey here on hole 13. Rachel for her par. No worries. A thoughtful routine. Very intentional about her putt. And this is for Sophie taking a par as well. Just going to tap it in here on 13. We see no birdies actually on one of the easier holes. Although... If you're not in the circle, the layup is very common, especially if you're not looking to accept too much risk. And we move on.
hole 14. A 208 meter par 4, you have to battle uphill the entire way. An ideal tee shot will push between these two trees here and break out into the left, where you then fight over this undulating fairway into a sloped green. This second shot needing a lot of height to ensure you don't ground it early into this mound. It then slopes softly downhill and once again uphill, allowing you to crash the green hard and fast, throw two driver shots and try to find your putt. Rachel up first, getting one of those D1s out there, really nice position. You see she's just a bit shy of that blue stake indicating 100 meters to the green. And Kaidi pulling this one a little bit to the right will be in the heart of those trees. Might have a gap and might not depending on where she is and how close to the back she got. So you see Sophie shaping a nice shot through the gap there, also fading out into the open side. We'll leave her a straight look into the hill. And Anneli just a foot off the floor the whole way. Gets a nice skip at the end, a long forward driven putt, uh, shot rather, leaving her with an upshot for a putt. As we see Kaidi off the knee, Scrambling back into the fairway, I think all you can really do from there. And Sophie crushing this one, trying to manufacture a birdie look here. Huge drive and really well aimed as she is just outside bullseye. Incredible shot from Sophie. Anneli also from a great spot going for the power hyzer. And a good looking shot, I think just shy of the green, but... Absolutely putting. It will be significantly uphill. Rachel, the furthest drive so far on the lead card. She's hanging this one out nice and wide, really pushing it, but a little bit too wide as the camera angle there, slightly deceptive of where we were on the hill. She will be left with a long look, potentially just another layup for her. Although she has a five stroke lead with only so many holes left. Smooth upshot from Kaidi to ensure she's taking a par after a tee shot into the trees. There's the approach from Rachel. Nice and safe. Knowing par will most likely get her there. But Anneli, I'm sure, wants this one. Just a little bit shy. Sophie for birdie, and she does it. Really nice three. Ideal tee shot. Huge smash on the second to make it to the basket and translates that to the three. Anneli going to be taking the par here. Kaidi and Rachel the same as they are both parked here on hole 14. Only Sophie with the birdie, and she's actually snuck her way into contention for those top three podium spots now at four under. A very tight race. They walk to hole 15, a 228 meter par four, going downhill the entire way. It does look like the fairway bends softly to the left, although given the soft slope from right to left, two straight shots will really do everything you need. You can throw your straight shot towards these trees on the right and try to fade before it into this open fairway where you slope downwards nice and straight with trees to the right and the left to this open green. For a lot of players, a big driver rip off the tee and then a slightly lower speed disc to try and approach and crash. Sophie with the lone birdie on 14, taking the box here, getting this one turned over, a really nice straight driven flight, right in the middle, great shot. Never in any danger at all of playing with the left or right side rough, 
We see Rachel here putting a soft flex out there with a nice stable disc. She also comes up right in the middle, both of those quite ideal positions. Kaidi also playing the flex. Really nice, all of them avoiding everything and she is way down there. A beautiful shot, getting that nose angle just right, high enough for distance but low enough to control the fade. Anneli, known as one of the longer throwers in the FBO field, finds that early tree to the right. Very common for a lot of players who late release or overturn it. She'll still be left with a lot of distance now to the green. She tries to rip this one downhill. I think fading out towards the left side from what we saw, but looks like it had a lot of distance and heat on it. Sophie now from a good position, trying to put this one long and straight into the green. She fades out left, but I believe no danger over there for her. A long look. But Rachel overturns her approach quite early on. We'll be left with an obstructed look to the green, I think, simply playing for par now. Although it may just be enough. Kaidi here. Shaping a beautiful straight shot up to the green. Settles it at, I think, about circle's edge. We'll see how far she is left with. Two nice shots from Kaidi as she is putting for birdie now. Anneli from the left side playing the one angle hyzer. Great control of the speed going downhill there. Sits it nice and close. As Rachel with a really awkward stance by the stump here. And an early release that will leave her with a tester for sure. You see just how uncomfortable that release point was. As we see Kaidi here for birdie. Just a little bit to the left side. May have felt the pressure there. So we round out these last few holes. We see a simple upshot. Rachel here. An important putt. Oh, and commanding right in the middle. That's incredible from Rachel. Really solid stuff. A great putt at a great moment, as you see her briefly smile to the cameras. Anneli from short also securing her par. Looking like all of our players here. securing the fours on hole 15. Hole 16, the third to last. This par five sits at 257 meters. You have a few gaps to choose from as you want to pierce through those trees and out into this open field with your tee shot. You then want to throw something fighting with the hill to get as much distance as possible. Going left to right, the backhand turnover shapes really nicely as your second shot will then position you to hopefully go under these low ceiling branches on your third, where you will play a soft to hyzer approach for the right-handed backhand player, fighting your way up to this green. Very common, you can get some skips there leading up to it. Also helpful with the low ceiling. This one requires three good power shots and then a putt to birdie. Sophie with a nice straight shot there, straight down the middle. Really never in any danger from the trees. That's exactly what you want. We see Rachel now getting this one turned over through the gap and flexing out, really putting the distance down, hitting the tunnel as well. Very impressive. We'll see if anyone can match her drive. Kaidi going for it here, getting this one turning as well. She wants to push this up there. And actually may have hit the cameraman.
Anneli trying to play the forehand out the gap. Doesn't get enough Anheuser to complete its flight before fading. As we see, just a simple pitch out from there. Back into the open. Sophie now. She gets a solid skip anywhere up there near that tree is a good position to attack under the low ceiling. So that's a good indicator of where a second drive that is solid will leave you. That's sort of the cutoff of where you need to be. But we see a, an amazing drive from Kaidi getting all that extra distance there. Now with a great look. And Rachel, also an amazing tee shot. She's going to try and attack this low ceiling now, but a nose up flight there catches her. She'll begin to hyze her out. Oh, a fine shot there. Doesn't contend at all with that and pushes the distance to an ideal spot. She might be a little bit left and pinched, but so close to the low-hanging fairway that she can get under it, I think, quite easily. See Anneli looking to shape this one through the gap. Once again, coming from the cameraman. Nice and quick. That one fires past them. Sophie looking to have this skip now off the earth. Look at that, firing up towards the basket. An ideal shot. That is incredible from Sophie. Matching the ceiling perfectly, getting the final ground play. Really solid. We see Kaidi there opting for a little bit of a higher shot. Actually goes long of the basket. There is some OB there, which you see she is just shy of. Still in the green, still putting safely. Rachel here playing for the skip. Looks like she fought through those shadows and came up short left of the green. Yeah, as you see her. Oh, looking like she's in quite a good spot. I thought a little bit early from the hand, but still very much positioned for her putt. Anneli continuing to pitch out with some of the difficult stances. Rachel unable to connect with that one, looking like circle two. She fades out a touch early. We have Kaidi coming back towards the basket now. Oh, and also that's a downhill putt. Gets that nose down a little bit too much as it drops early. We see Anneli there. Solid putt. Rachel now for par. And Sophie, an incredible upshot, allowing her the tap in birdie four here on tough hole 16. That is a great hole to birdie in such a way, and she can hold her head high on her way out. Really shaping up for her here late in the round. We move to hole 17, a 125 meter par four. Although playing significantly, significantly longer than that, it is uphill the entire way with OB lining the left side. You really want something which is significantly turned over if you're throwing backhand or to blast a forehand as far as you can up the hill. You then have this big guardian tree that you want to wrap around. I think for a lot of players, it's a power backhand and then a power forehand battling up the hill the whole way. Sophie now actually tied with Kaidi has fought her way all the way to five under with an incredible round, gets a great drive up there, really nice position. Rachel getting this turned over. She's going to start fading towards OB, but settles it nicely. That is also a great drive. The closer you are to the left, the more it opens up the angle around the corner. So really allowing players to push that, although the only real error to make here on hole 17 is to find that OB left. And as we see, as a result, a lot of players playing significantly to the right just to mitigate that lone risk here on hole 17. 
Anna Lee with a nice distance shot matching the grade of the hill. Right in the middle, I think a forehand approach for her as well. And I mentioned the lone risk. This is also a very fast and very sloping green. There is a high chance of potential roll away, unfortunately. We've seen it all weekend. You want to hit chains or nothing. We see Sophie trying to battle that Anheuser up the hill towards the green. She comes up a little bit short, fading out flat. She'll have a lateral putt along the hillside, I believe, from circle two. Anneli pushing this one as close as possible, potentially losing some steam off that branch, but certainly putting up the hill. Rachel now to put this one close. She plays out to the left side and actually finds herself OB. Slightly unforced error there, I think, ensuring that she gets around the tree playing the width, flipping it up to flat though, and actually turning over. Her disc does not remain in bounds. So you see Kaidi get the forehand up there. Sophie up first now. Oh, great bid from deep. Catches just the top and settles. That's a fortunate result to sit down after hitting the top like that. And Rachel just laying up from the OB, accepting her fate, knowing that she has a cushion to work with. This being the second to last hole. Kaidi, you see, oh no. She thought it was in was ready to walk it in and then turns her back as her disc rolls away down the hill. Definitely some frustration from her. Let's see how quickly she putts now. I hope she can find her routine. There you go. Looking like she's calmed a bit now. Going to try and put this one in. Incredible. Incredible. Amazing stuff. She keeps her name right up there in the battle for these podium positions. Anneli now. Catches the bottom cage and oh no, her disc stands up as well. As she continues to roll away. And now towards the out of bounds... Oh, folks, it is still going. And a tragic outcome there for Anneli Togios Meniste. She actually abandons that throw. You can always opt to abandon a throw, taking the penalty. She is now left with the same putt. <laughs> going left side. She'll be taking a fairly large number. As we see Rachel there with a short tap in, stress free, Sophie as well. We'll see a bogey for Rachel, par for Kaidi, par for Sophie. And I believe a double bogey for Anneli now on this putt. At the last second here. A really bad break for her. The tragedy of disc golf. It's beautiful, but it is also unforgiving. We move to hole 18. A 136 meter par three going downhill the entire way. This is a tunnel shot. Anything that does not turn over enough or is too nose up will quickly highs her out. You can throw backhand or forehand. I've seen anything from a putter to a distance driver be thrown. So it really is pick your shot, fire it down the hill, nice and straight. This is the final hole of the tournament now, as we will see Rachel Turton try to secure her lead on the final hole. The battle for second and third still very much in play as well between Sophie and Kaidi, both tied at five under par. We see Sophie on the tee first. She gets this on a hyzer release as it turns over through the gap. Really beautiful shape, and she fires all the way up there. Long off the basket, settles by the banners, and gets claps. 
You can see the smile. She really pured that line. Kaidi now seeing that Sophie is most likely at worst taking a three. Definitely potential for birdie, given her strong putting and her lie. Kaidi turns this over a little bit too much. She fires towards that right side where she will be significantly obstructed to the green. An easy par, but I think that might be a very tough birdie if she does end up needing it. We see your leader here, Rachel Turton, firing a safe straight shot down the fairway. She'll be left with a short pitch up and a tap in par to secure her win here at the second stop of the PDGA Euro Tour. Anneli playing more of a hyzer flip on the right side. Catches quite a lot of fade towards the end. She will be in circle two. Going back towards the basket. Rachel up first. You see the jump putt approach. You see her get it right up there by the pin. That is all she needs to do to secure her win. Kaidi, with an awkward hyzer release, tries to get as close as possible, comes up a little bit short, still with a putt to be made. Certainly not stress-free. Anneli from downtown, laying up. And Sophie here, with the potential for a huge putt. Just a little bit shy, looks like a really good line out of her hand. Now left with that short putt, Kaidi will need to make this to retain her share of that podium position. And she does. Cash is that. Kaidi will be ending this tournament at five under total. A great performance, and we'll see where that leaves her at the very end as we see Sophie now to match. Also taking par here on 18. Some important putts. Anneli with a really strong performance, but an unfortunate break on hole 17. Tapping in her par as well. Rachel Turton now to win the 2023 Konopiste Open. Just out the left side. She doesn't need it. She still has the win. As she taps that in. There you go, Rachel Turton, your FPO champion and winner of the PDGA Euro Tour Konopiste Open. Congratulations, Rachel. You see her hoisting the trophy there. Had an incredible second round to position herself with a huge lead coming into this final round and managed to hold it to the very end. Some camaraderie from the lead card congratulating her on her win. Incredible stuff. As we look at the overall final standings, Rachel Turton, your solo leader, with a total score of 8 under par. Tied in second, we saw the intense battle between Sophie Bjorlika and Kaidi Alsalu. Tying for second place, Christy Und, firing 2 under for the round, ending 3 under total, snuck up into fourth place, with Anneli falling to fifth after a tough roll away on 17. What an exciting battle on an incredible course, and what a historic moment. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you at the next stop of the Euro Tour.